let me instead you should learn tamil Okay, on set. So today's topic is what is uh, inside an uh, atomic force microscope and how does it work? And sounds very interesting topic. So uh, you don't need to rip a rip a uh, apart an AFM. So this is how typical AFM looks like. Uh, this is one of the oldest uh, design, and uh, this is uh, the NCL AFM, which is uh, quite old, around 18 years old. So uh, almost all the AFMs looks uh, more or less same. Uh, you know, this is a patented design, so uh, but components are more or less same. There is not much change in the basic uh, uh, design. So you have basically, if you start from top to bottom, so we have this is some this is somewhere you know here uh, the sample goes here. And uh, I, as I told you, that it can be uh, different from company to company. But uh, uh, so you put, you put the sample here, and you can see that it is held in ambient environment. And uh, there goes the tip holder, uh, SPM Pro. So the tip actually sits uh, quite close to uh, the sample uh, surface, and that is the the trick that how do you uh, without without crashing. On the surface, how do you manage it? Uh, and then you have uh, 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 basically photo photodiode, uh, which detects the laser signal. So basically, there is a laser, and laser falls onto the cantilever head. I'll show you in a minute in uh, the zoom up view. So these are the uh, knobs for laser alignment. So laser must fall onto the top of the cantilever at an apex. So for that, this alignment is done. Okay. Once the laser falls onto the top of the cantilever and cantilever is well placed onto the sample slightly above, uh, then you can. Uh, so this is a probe holder. You can see, and stage control basically you want to move up, down, uh, sorry, sideways. So this this can be done, and uh, this is the main part, scanner, and uh, the scanner uh, does raster scanning of the sample. Here tip remains stationary. I mean, tip doesn't move x, y, z, uh, but here sample is moving. Uh, so there are options that uh, see. For example, you want to scan uh, sometimes high resolution. So probably you are interested in 50 nanometer, 50 nanometer scan size. And sometimes you are interested in one micron by one micron scan size. And sometimes you are interested in 10 micron by 10 micron scan size. Uh, depends upon what is the uh, What is interest? Suppose you are looking at atomic resolution, so definitely you would like to see 10 nanometer, 10 nanometer size, and uh, then you scan it. Uh, then you basically uh, take the pixels like 512, 512, uh, you know, in a square matrix. So then you will have sufficient data points to give you uh, quite nice resolution. Uh, so what I'm trying to tell you that uh, one scanner cannot cover such a large distance because there will be definitely An error because scanners are usually they are highly non-linear and they undergo aging. So basically, you apply voltage to zero to twenty two twenty voltage, and then for two twenty voltage, the scanner uh, moves to its maximum. Suppose scanner has got limit uh, to go to one micron. So you can say that two twenty and two twenty voltage is equal to uh, one micron. So suppose you want to move only uh, by ten uh, nanometer, so you can. Uh, it's non-linear relation. It's not like you can just uh, uh, divide by uh, voltage and you get the uh, basically per voltage how much it moves. It's not like that. So I'll come to that. So, but definitely uh, one scanner cannot uh, cover uh, entire area. So that's why you have three scanners. Uh, but these days, what 
people do that standards are getting much better but basically this is a piezo uh, ceramic so ceramic has or has got its own limitations Mm, there are other kinds of scanners also, but and there are this closed loop and open loop. I won't go into detail because in in, in scanner also I can spend like half an hour half an hour teaching you about scanner, but that's not the purpose. Unless you are interested, I can really it's too much detail about scanner and a scanner is basically as I said that it is it is a prime problem uh, that many many times people don't get uh, good images uh, because that is giving you the uh, sense of movement, whether it is sub from or angstrom. Otherwise, how do you know where you're sitting actually? So it has to be well calibrated. So when you say that AFM calibration, basically you, are, uh, you have to routinely calibrate uh, AFM scanner. So for example, you say that uh, I'm moving uh, sample by one micron uh, towards this side. So how do you know that you have really moved to uh, around one micron? So basically, you your scanner uh, is moving. So scanner also does uh, undergo aging. So for example, it it's, it moves by certain step size today. So after six months, it may not be uh, it may not give you that number. So a new scanner they age much faster. But once they uh, so there is a situation there is a plateau you reach uh, after certain time period and then depends upon uses also. So voltage has to be highly stable. There should not be any water penetrating. Otherwise there can be, uh, you know, you, somebody can damage this scanner and it usually happens. So this this uh, optical signal, uh, you can see it here. Uh, so you can see the modes here, whether it is a contact mode or tapping mode, you can get the voltage also that how much voltage you're getting. For example, you want to maximize the uh, optical signal uh, so you can see the sum signal here, and then uh, this cable finally goes to the brain of the AFM, uh, which is called controller. That's it. You have only controller and this AFM, and of course you can put this entire thing in uh, environmental chamber. For example, you are working on some sensitive surfaces, so you can put entire uh, this uh, uh, entire this uh, sample stage. Uh, uh, into uh, environmental control uh, glove box, uh, or you can put it in acoustic isolation. Suppose you are doing scanning tunneling microscope. So you would like to normally, because scanning tunneling microscope at atomic resolution is a highly sensitive measurements. So usually students, they do it in the night or they will leave it uh, 24 hour on. Uh, so electronics, uh, so you are, when you do highly sensitive measurements, so you, it is basically, it's advisable that you leave it on for like 24 hours. Uh, okay, so it's you now you realize that these physics instruments, physics things are very very uh, difficult. Uh, you can't do the measurements. Many times people uh, do the do the AFM measurement or STM. They don't know really what they are doing. Most of the people, uh, physicists stuff obviously they know. But uh, I'm telling I'm telling about non physicists. They just buy the AFM and they don't get the desired desired results because they do not know the basic the basic training is lacking actually. So hardcore physicists will leave the uh, room locked and will come at the night and do the sensitive measurements. And uh, it takes a lot of time to uh, stabilize the electronics. So uh, another another point is thermal stability because all the electronics, uh, the parameters are highly sensitive to the temperature fluctuation. So for example, uh, you have put the AC on 25. So, and you, you uh, your outside temperature is around 40 degree or 35 degrees so it takes time to thermalize the room and then it takes more time to th uh, that uh, that thermalize all the ic's and so believe me your room temperature may uh, come to 25 within half an hour but uh, inside all the components because of heat is generated it, it may take several hours for the ic's to get stabilized finally to the component level it takes a lot of time because everything has got heat insulation and its own uh, heat generation also. So, uh, and these elect electrical parameters of ICs, they depend heavily on the temperature. Normally when you use your mobile phone and other things, you do not bother. But if you look at the mobile phone specifications, there is always a specification that this mobile phone will work uh, only in this temperature range. Otherwise it doesn't work. But you, using your mobile phone, you are not doing uh, atomic resolution imaging. Uh, 
or very sensitive force measurement like in pico uh, newton so when you are do, when you are doing reproducible science uh, which has to be validated uh, across the globe so you can't that's a problem that many of the many of the time this uh, results are not reliable because we do not consider uh, these small small things finally it has to be kept under uh, strict vibration isolation so uh, i used to teach one separate lecture on vibration isolation because there are it's a very serious subject when it whether it is electron microscopy or uh, many uh, or atomic force, force microscopy any high resolution microscopy vibration isolation is given a very serious thought there are there are site inspections before you even install the microscopes so that is the the main test of the microscope that on which floor you can show the atomic resolution you can show the graphite imaging so uh, it is a natural uh, problem it is not like some uh, structural problem also sometimes natural problem and structural problem because every building itself is like a giant cantilever okay if you if you uh, you might have uh, experience larger turbulence if you uh, sit at the tail part of the uh, aeroplane and if you sit in the middle you uh, Uh, in fact in the bus also in the city uh, road transport bus uh, most of the people uh, prefer not sitting at the back of the bus because you get uh, big jhatkas actually right uh, hmm? okay so so people who want to sleep in the bus they can't sleep because they will wake up uh, with the bus uh, you know riding over the speed breakers so the same thing same principle works here because there uh, f is equal to uh, basically that uh, spring uh, bus is, has got its own spring constant you can consider bus itself is like a spring and uh, so uh, so one uh, part of the spring is fixed uh, to the wheels other part is loose it is uh, uh, you know basically it is allowed to sway up and down the tail part same thing in in the plane also so uh, so, uh, so hooke's law applies there okay so everything has got its own resonance frequency for example i am sitting in this ncl building so depending upon the structural uh, rigidity of this building so it has got its own several resonance frequency resonance frequency is not sometimes when there are higher modes also okay so depending upon the floor uh, suppose you live on high rise uh, in gurgaon 18 floor 20 floor and there is an earthquake so you might have seen that top floor resident they experience uh, more uh, vigorous uh, more violent uh, movements of uh, their houses rather than uh, the people who live on the ground floor or uh, first few floors so basically you can consider that as an afm tip so there you, you can consider that the 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 tower the building tower the basement is basically rigidly rigidly held uh, to the structure and then uh, the other part is swing okay so uh, here uh, one part is mechanical uh, noise uh, in mechanical noise this kind of structural noise comes so it uh, it has uh, its own frequencies basically low frequency noise for example building vibrations are low frequency noise audio noise are uh, audio noise is basically you know that audio frequency so depending upon few hertz to few kilohertz and sometimes few megahertz the you have to uh, basically uh, you have to uh, cut down those uh, sources uh, of noise one by one so vibration isolation itself is a big science and uh, there is lot uh, which goes into the vibration isolation of the microscope so it's a very serious thing actually in, in microscopy vibration isolation is given very serious thought uh, no matter what you are trying to do uh, and another is acoustic oscillation acoustic isolation chamber uh, is easier uh, so you can just take thermocol uh, chamber and uh, you can take the shroud metal shroud and put it there uh, and uh, then just cover it up with the metal thick metal sheet and uh, which is lined with the thick uh, thermocol so once you cl close the hood then you are you can say that you are acoustically shielded so somebody is uh, uh, talking uh, or uh, you know walking or some noise is there some machine noise from neighboring uh, lab so it won't affect uh, 
it won't give noise in your imaging otherwise you will see that somebody suppose somebody is walking in the corridor you will see immediately immediately you will see not noise uh, in your images and uh, that you have to filter it out there are filtering mechanism again fourier transform what we learned in the electromicroscopy that the steam mechanism uh, is useful here so you can uh, you know that uh, noise is in certain frequency so you can to take the uh, fourier transform remove the remove that frequency because fourier transform is basically you are going to the frequency space so once you go to the frequency space from real space you can easily identify that frequency remove it and then convert it back reverse to fft and then you come back to the real space so you, the noise is gone otherwise how will you know that the what kind of frequency noise has come to the imaging uh, and uh, the last part is uh, uh, electrical noise mechanical noise acoustic noise and last part is uh, electrical noise for electrical noise i remember that uh, when i joined at ncl so uh, there was no means to even uh, acoustic noise uh, isolation was not there so later on i ended up buying the entire thing uh, for uh, mechanical isolation normally uh, there is a table uh, which is called pneumatic isolation so there is basically a platform which is suspended on air platform so you have to connect the air cylinder to that so uh, you are nicely isolated uh, suppose somebody lean against that table so air from doesn't nothing happens to the air from suppose somebody is putting the लोगों की आदत होती है इंडिया में ऐसे करके बैठने की या ऐसे करके सपोज सम स्कूटर इज देयर समबडी विल जस्ट यू नो स्टैंड ऑन दैट एंड दैट्स अ टिपिकल अवर ओन देसी वे किसी का भी सहारा लेकर के ऐसे अपनी बॉडी को लगा देते हैं बुढ़ापा आ जाता है जैसे ओके सो सो दैट पीपल ट्राई टू डू इन एएफएम लैब आल्सो टॉकिंग टू समबडी एंड ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ पीपल आर देयर स्पेशली पीपल हु आर नॉट ट्रेन about the seriousness of these noise sources so uh, electrical noise i tell you that i went to the city and i i purchased a thick uh, copper uh, plate very thick a very heavy copper plate and i got it i got a faraday cage built right there in the um, in i think in silver workshop and that work that gave us very good quality uh, stm images ramya was able to get very good quality stm images once i Uh, installed that so later that became redundant because i purchased better professional quality but for electrical uh, isolation that was amazing that faraday cage which i built was amazing there was no match for that but it, it didn't serve for mechanical isolation so um, i could not do anything otherwise i was planning to put some sand bags or some uh, car tire so you can put inflated car tire filled with sand Uh, that also works fine but these days there are active uh, vibration isolations you know some companies are claiming that including park so let us not go into that because it's otherwise it will take entire i told you that this is a very serious uh, thing scanner is a very serious thing vibration isolation is an extremely serious thing i have dedicated lecture only on that which will make you expert in vibration isolation of any machine including electro microscope you might have seen uh, high resolution electro microscope normally the floor is dug out normally the floor part uh, they dig it uh, around 3 feet and they fill it with the uh, special material and they make uh, separate uh, platform for that and it is cut off from the other room other room floor actually there is a gap in that gap they fill some other material so basically it is isolated from rest of the floor so even somebody is walking and somebody is thumping somebody is jumping outside the corridor because the that platform is separated at least down to 3 4 feet so after that there is a damp natural damping happens uh, and also depends upon what kind of terrain you are on basically suppose you are on a hard rock like pune uh, so you have to consider different things hard rock may be uh, good for certain frequencies may be bad for certain frequencies okay uh, it's not always good so if you have sandy surfaces then it may be better sometimes but it may not be good for certain other things so it's a very it's a very tough choice so that's why uh, it's civil engineering issue but finally civil engineering is all the engineering are born out of physics 
so nothing is beyond physics so i have to for myself i have to read everything i may not teach you but i take small small things quite seriously so if you are a physics student you have to really take very seriously if you are a chemistry student then obviously you may not be interested in uh, going to detail but physics students out there nothing can escape your uh, sharp eye anybody okay so uh, now i uh, zoom it up so uh, this top part you can say that as i as i mentioned that this is a piezo piezo uh, tube uh, led zircon zirconium titanate okay it's a tube standard so this gives a moment z direct somebody's microphone is open dikitra dikitra you are talking to somebody okay so uh, you can see that uh, you, when you apply the voltage it, you can move in the z direction x direction and y direction so and this is uh, afm cantilever uh, this is substrate and this is cantilever you can see that it's a v shape now what is the reason that it is v shape and uh, sometimes it is bar shape so i'll tell you that uh, this has got a specific uh, purpose uh, especially uh, uh, i think rajendra asked this question about uh, Uh, frictional force microscopy uh, so for frictional force microscopy this uh, uh, v shape uh, cantilever design is especially uh, helpful sometimes it is just a uh, uh, just a bar coming out single bar now you can see that it is v shape so this gives it uh, more mechanical rigidity so for contact uh, contact uh, contact measurements uh, we take uh, this kind of a cantilever right so it, it uh because it is touching the surface so it, uh, it there are chances that cantilever can snap off so this cantilever design it gives it a higher uh, mechanical rigidity right uh for tapping wood uh, it is a, a bar shape basically so single uh, bar is uh, coming out of this uh, substrate it's all silicon or silicon nitride and you can see that this is a diode laser and diode laser basically falls uh, from the mirror prism and uh, it falls on the uh, tip of the uh, cantilever and uh, this is one of the most difficult task that you have to align uh, the laser should fall exactly at the at certain point and believe me there are uh, again i tell you that there is a lot of physics lot of physics papers are there so many papers are there that okay laser uh, where the laser should fall and even if it if it falls a little bit here and there uh, you can have problems with the sensitivity proper calculation so you can see that how much when you calculate uh, people are people make so much so much, there, are, there is so much of uh, scope of so much of mistakes if you do not really know what you are measuring so if the laser falls here and there you are gone completely your sensitivity is completely off how will you measure uh, the force Uh, quantitative measurement will be highly uh, erroneous so there are many papers and i have separate folder i can i mean i used to teach this uh, thing also uh, one of my past student also published uh, one paper exactly on this that uh, comparative studies of where the laser should fall and now nowadays basically there are automated systems our system at ncl is quite old and this this is entirely manual so you have better control uh, on where the laser is falling but sometimes if it is uh, these days nobody wants to do it manually so uh, machine does it by itself sometimes it does a good job sometimes it does lousy job sometimes uh, so basically uh, if you how do you uh, know that uh, laser is falling exactly on the there is a mechanism actually you move up and down uh, sideways and back ways uh, forward and back then you know uh, and you calculate the, uh, uh, the some signal here so this uh, Uh, this is the photo diode and it is split in uh, four parts a b c d uh, and uh, it helps you to uh, measure uh, so many parameters in one shot so uh, suppose you want to look at uh, the topography so uh, you would like to look at the afm signal a plus b minus c plus d so any movement uh, in the uh, afm cantilever because of the van der waal forces which we learned already either will bend the uh, cantilever up or it will bend the cantilever down 
two possibilities are there when the attractive forces happen so cantilever will bend downwards if it bend downwards you can see that this uh, laser will uh, shift uh, uh, shift basically towards this side okay towards top side this laser uh, will move start moving towards this side so uh, if that for the attractive force for the attractive force then if the laser moves uh, towards up upwards what will happen then uh, a and b diode will get more uh, laser signal in comparison to c and d right so if you take if you add the uh, uh, voltage signal uh, of a and b and uh, add the signals of c plus d so for attractive force a plus b minus c plus d will not be zero and it will be positive so if if a plus b minus c plus d for example the uh, this signal is uh, positive that means Uh, the forces are adhesive forces and uh, uh, attractive in nature. What it so cantilever is bending downwards. So uh, more this uh, more the higher the difference. That means uh, you are the forces are more attractive in nature. They are it's getting pulled more strongly. So that's how the uh, force measurement is uh, done. But as I told you that uh, it is still qualitative. how do you make it quantitative a uh, lot more goes into that actually otherwise you just uh, you can say that it is quantitative and quantity itself may be uh, not calibrated that's what i have been that's what i have been mentioning that if you do not understand you may you may really get some value but it, uh, who trust this value uh, it's a problem and now uh, rajendra's question also that uh, suppose you are looking at uh, comparing different surfaces or same surfaces suppose you take different kinds of polymers or um, uh, hybrid materials or for example a like inorganic inorganic uh, organic hybrid or or amorphous and uh, crystalline polymer blend uh, so uh, and you are interested and this is for some applications for example some paint application um some surface application uh, sometimes your paint uh, looks you want to look it glossy and uh, uh, okay and what is the glossiness where does the glossiness comes it is optically smooth anything which is optically smooth you already know what is the meaning of optically smooth and you can attend my ellipsometry classes which are hardcore uh, oriented towards hardcore uh, optics and there i will go into much details of uh, uh, those those interesting things um fine so uh, so instead of uh, in addition to the up and down movement and okay let us understand the uh, repulsive forces so if the forces are repulsive so this cantilever will bend uh, something like this you look at me uh, there is a small box on top right so you can see so this cantilever is now bending like this so if it is bending like this so that means the force is uh, repulsive in nature so if it is uh, moving like this so if the laser is falling here so laser will uh, basically slide downwards so you can see that on this mirror the laser will instead of falling here laser will fall somewhere downwards so that means this uh, point here will be uh, more concentrated uh, in the uh, lower uh, photo detectors Uh, there are split diode photo detectors so c and d will get more signal than a plus d so now this now if you take a sum of this signal so a plus b minus c plus d will be negative and so uh, and that uh, also uh, uh, that also basically uh, goes well with uh, our uh, picture uh, picture when we make of lenard jones potential if you remember lenard jones lenard jones potential Uh, y axis and then x axis intermolecular distance uh, what we learned last time so you can see that negative dis negative uh, potential we say that okay it's so repulsive and positive is attractive so here fortunately when we have this uh, positive number uh, obviously this this will be a number in voltage it, it is not a uh, okay so because uh, light is converted into uh, voltage signal using photo diode so uh so now we can say yes yes it is now we are into the repulsive mode so more cantilever it, it bends uh, like upwards 
the more basically you are in the poly exclusion uh, poly, poly exclusion zone and uh, like one over r to the power 12 joule uh, so that's how you know that uh, forces are repulsive in nature so uh, this is basically the basic uh, uh, way how this afm detects uh, the forces and i will tell you how to convert uh, this voltage into the actual uh, force in newton okay now uh, the second part is that uh, it is not always up and down movement the mm, movement can be sideways so how do you pick up the sideways movement sideways movements can be picked up by looking at the uh, differences between a plus d uh, minus b plus d so when it uh, moves sideways so sometimes a plus d minus d plus d signal will be uh, positive sometimes it will be negative so more uh, you have the sideway movement that means more frictional forces are present if there is no sideway uh, movement that means there is no uh, uh, frictional forces but there is a uh, catch here uh, when i teach frictional force microscopy i teach suppose your uh, your uh, surface is smooth but you are uh, riding um, you are basically um, descending okay from a smooth surface you are going downward slope okay so for example just imagine yourself on uh, on a hill and uh, smooth hill and you are climbing down you can see that your entire body uh, uh, basically uh, bends in certain direction downwards uh, so uh, so now a question arises that suppose i i am uh, just uh, going down on an uneven surface surface is uh, frictionless but it has a slope so then also this will uh, this lateral movement will be there so how do i differentiate that lateral movement from uh, friction so the answer lies that uh, when you go in the reverse direction when you ride on that same slope so you are, you basically stand uh, both ways on the same in the same line you go um, right to left and left to right so there uh, you get the signal and then you cancel it out so you will realize that uh, if it is slope then you, when you ride on the slope cantilever will bend Uh, in the opposite direction so that means it was slope it was it was not due to the friction so that's how you uh, get the true uh, frictional force microscopy image so it is written ffm is basically the frictional force microscopy so so this uh, photodiode split into the four parts helps us to uh, this is one of the mm, cleverest design that in one shot you can uh look at uh, the um, two different modes actually and there are many other things uh, i'll tell you uh, when we go to the uh, tapping mode for example role of uh, lock in amplifier so in tapping mode what exactly happens that this uh, cantilever is uh, resonating at certain frequency uh, for example 100 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz so when this uh, cantilever resonates at 50 kilohertz it's moving up and down very fast okay so when it is moving up and down for, uh, very fast so the laser which falls uh, here will also move up and down uh, uh, at that same frequency there will be a phase lag so when this cantilever is up so this laser may not be at the same point so that means this point uh, is uh, moving up and down here this laser points is also moving because this this is also moving so when uh, that cantilever is far away from the surface so you can see that uh, this can and this cantilever is resonating so obviously this uh, this will move up and down and you have constant uh, movement of uh, uh, this beam here also so that means this signal will also be sinusoidal so the suppose this is this is sinusoidal so this will be sinusoidal um, because this is sinusoidal uh, movement of the laser spot so this current this voltage will also be uh, uh, have sinusoidal movement so that's how you can pick up the frequency of this its movement uh, right here so the voltage frequency will be more or less the same uh, as this one uh, so when this cantilever comes into the contact with the surface so because of the surface forces 
so there will be change in the amplitude amplitude reduction will be there because the surface forces are dragging you know holding it uh, tightly so the free amplitude uh, the uh, it will it will deviate from the free amplitude and the phase shift will be there and the frequency there are three things only in a wave right phase frequency and uh, uh, amplitude so all these three things are, will undergo changes so in that mode actually uh, amplitude change uh, and frequency change and the phase change it uh, is uh, if you realize that uh, you have to lock into uh, that frequency basically you have to uh, identify that particular frequency so there will be frequency shift also but normally people don't consider that frequency shift uh, in normal afm people look at the amplitude shift and the phase shift and phase shift is basically believe me it's one of the richest uh, source of information the way we have seen uh, phase contrast microscopy hrt uh, in electron microscopy here phase contrast uh, microscopy is ultra sensitive mode for uh, surface chemistry so if your surface chemistry is different uh, then it will pick up the signals uh, very nicely actually uh, okay so i'll so this is the picture of uh, uh, lock in amplifier and this is heart of the afm more expensive the afm more lock in amplifiers are there and uh, you can catch more and more signals actually uh, and these lock in amplifiers uh, are basically for example you want to lock lock in amplifier is you know the amplifier right it 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 picks up the signal and it uh, increases uh, uh, its voltage so lock in amplifier is basically uh, suppose you have a variety of uh, frequencies uh, some frequencies uh, you have a mix of signals so you want to amplify only uh, certain uh, signals for example the way you uh, easier way to understand a simpler form of lock in amplifier is basically uh, you know you have this uh, bass in treble right uh, when you do this uh, uh, equalizer uh, settings in your mobile phone you might have seen equalizer equalizer settings so when you do the equalizer settings at different frequencies what exactly you are do, telling um, the mobile phone uh, software to enhance certain frequencies and to uh, amplify certain frequency and deamplify certain frequencies so how does it know that which frequency is which for example you uh, first uh, do the audio frequency analysis of that audio signal so audio uh, audio signal is first analyzed uh, in real time for its frequency then only uh, this uh, amplification or deamplifications Uh, can happen for example you want to uh, listen to the uh, you know drums uh, basically uh, signal you want to enhance that so you know that uh, some of the drum beats uh, more they are more uh, dominant in certain uh, frequency range so you lock into that frequency and amplify that so this is in a simpler layman language lock in amplifier is exactly uh much actually more much higher and much highly sophisticated highly accurate highly thermally stable uh it is it's my one of my favorite tool actually you know any physicist would love this tool because you can do so many things with that so and it is quite expensive it cost uh, one of you know high end will cost probably tens of lakh rupees so sometimes you you may require three of these lock in amplifier in an afm the more the better you can catch more signals you can do much better more interesting things um, okay so the cost goes up so so this is and the quality of a uh, quality of this uh, matters a lot you can buy uh, some chinese version for cheaper price you know few few lakh rupees which will which will tell you that okay i can do this but uh, when you look at the uh, signal you will be full of noise it will be unstable so how do you rely on these things some of the german machines will be amazing actually they spend a lot of time in perfecting each and every component so yeah so for example azilent is a very good machine it's a american machine so that's the reason that you have to be very careful what you are buying inside some uh, crap component may be there and it you may get it very uh, at a very cheaper price look at the what chinese have done the market like that so uh, so when it comes to the physics you want you don't want to trust uh because you have to reproduce the results it's not like a mobile phone here you can't trust actually uh somebody will catch your knack if your data has got a problem right and 
it is it is recorded it's published forever okay so be very careful with the uh, measurements the data we which collect the ownership is uh, my ownership and my my students ownership whatever data goes into my paper my student thesis so even if it is taken uh, through some collaborator or some operator driven machine so finally when you put it in the thesis the ownership is yours and many times students put all kinds of data without understanding uh, uh, what they are doing the physics uh, they are doing actually uh, so for example uh, i'll tell i'll tell the example of i don't know whether this uh, latest thesis uh, rijwana she did all her work by herself she did all the raman work herself she knows about raman in and out because uh, these kind of students uh, are precious because they get trained on one machine they know in and out about the machine which they have worked it's not like they've taken data from somewhere so so she so the students like uh, her can immediately recognize what is wrong with this actually what is wrong I even mean, analysis comes with age i may not be also you know so everybody you know is improving the analysis but at least your connectivity with the instrument how the how the detector is being cooled what kind of you know, whether you are cooling it properly for noise um, reduction what kind of lasers you are using what is the wattage of the laser what what wattage can do to your sample whether it can do damage to your sample when you are into that uh, otherwise you may be shining uh 20 20 milliwatt uh, laser onto your sample and you may be just exposing it for a longer time and you may end up getting crack you may be permanently damaging your sample and most of the times students mm, may not even understand that this laser is actually not measuring it's just modifying your sample you are collecting some junk when you are doing common spectroscopy so there are several studies like that and i look for those papers and i teach that that how uh, i have a dedicated uh, uh, presentation on raman uh, uh, on carbon i think somebody wanted me to teach just raman on carbon so i have a, i think 150 slides more than that just on the application of raman on carbon so it's very important so there i uh, taught uh, how serious Uh, a sig- same with the force actually. Same with AFM. AFM is not uh, not destructive. It is, it does its own problems. So you have to be careful. For example, you are imaging uh, with the contact mode uh, on a surface, and uh, so surface uh, particles uh, may get removed by the forces, and those particles may stick to the sa- the tip. So your tip is now a larger tip. It's not the tip what you purchased. with the sharp tip sharp uh, probe okay now because it's it collecting the debris so now the overall tip is much larger so over a period of time tip get uh, worn out it becomes blunt it collects all the debris so tip size uh, increases so the image quality so if you are just using the same tip or you are not careful so tip cleaning itself is a very uh, uh, careful task suppose you give uh, to some institute hey, please do my please please do the afm on my samples so are you really uh, careful what kind of uh, afm tip was used what was the spring constant what was the dimensions of the tip how uh, clean it was whether the tip were damaged how many samples uh, before your samples that tip Uh, imaged whether there was any contamination on that tip before uh, touching your touching the sample surface. So it's not uh, what I'm trying to tell you. No measurement is trivial. Most of the time, students they just go and uh, okay, okay, boy, my AFM, I need image. That's it. That's the goal. Uh, so that is the problem. Uh, there is a lack of seriousness actually. So that's what i was mentioning some students they know that uh, it's like a blind uh, testing actually blind uh, you know you blind fold and then you rush to 
uh, and uh, most of the time these people are you know sometimes i i what can i do i i don't do it i didn't do it i i mean when you go to the uh, when you are using any technique it's your ownership your responsibility if you are using afm you are using xps it is not operator operator's responsibility its ownership belongs to you the when the data is delivered to you and you are publishing it it's a, you are the uh, owner of uh, the data that's the problem we are not serious and uh, uh, in india mostly this problem is there in india you know, i don't see this problem that much abroad that's why we many times you know image is not very good so we have to change this actually that uh, students should be that intellectual involvement uh, awareness should be there full awareness what we are doing why are we doing and checks and balances should be there uh, okay uh, there should be sops actually okay if you don't have your sops for any uh, any measurements it will be you nobody will trust you nobody will just trust you actually so be very careful hmm? so how will you sell the product in the market how will you compete with uh, china if you do not have a faith in your data how will you uh, reject uh, somebody else's data somebody else's pro product on technical ground uh, when it comes to applications so your own measurements are not reliable suppose you are making a polymer product and you say that oh this is a shiny surface and this is super smooth obviously you have to use afm without afm how will you uh, prove uh even paint companies they do they have their own research lab i used to collaborate a lot with asian paints so so these machines uh, so one is that you outsource it okay i have got it done from somewhere else and uh, and so basically third party will do it for you and you just blame the other person and it's a big problem and this this can be a problem when it it becomes uh, it basically suppose you are testing an explosive and it has happened somebody was telling me the story Uh, that uh, some explosives came for chemical testing in some lab i don't want to name i don't even remember actually i it, so basically uh, th there was a test problem in the testing protocol and testing was done some like energy uh, produced uh, from explosive burning was calculated in all kinds of and when the field trial happened then this you know some serious problems happened then uh, now question came is that uh, who takes the blame suppose there is some accident uh, fire some problem in the chemical plant so then this problem becomes very serious that oh you told me to put this 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 and how did you measure the measurements becomes a serious problem in india measurement test and measurements whether it, for chemicals we do not have that world class expertise we are not serious actually we don't take seriously okay so this is how uh, i told you that it is uh, uh, quad photo detector okay now you have understood uh, how uh, so as as it to the scanners uh, different companies they have different uh, nomenclature but now you know that uh, uh, for different kind of work you would like to pick up different scanner so for example zay it's a j j kind of scanner it can scan uh, maximum 125 to 125 micron and vertical range is on 5 micron for example if it is uh, sample is very rough so you would like to take uh, this is scanner but this is scanner may not give you uh, uh, so for example you are looking at some uh, particle which is around 10 nanometer it may not give you uh, good data it may, it may not be very reliable for that range so you would like to choose uh, this scanner for a 400 by 400 nanometer scanner uh for a smaller area so it is desirable that uh, if you want to scan entire area so you take this first and then you directly take this one or uh, mostly people use e scanner which is the middle one so it basically serves uh, you can stretch it uh, to this limit little bit and you know you can do the um, low resolution and high resolution because microscopy in microscopy you would like to do uh, low resolution you start with the low resolution you understand first low resolution features and then only you jump to the high resolution right uh, know the forest before counting leaves right that's the uh, basic concept of uh, uh, microscopy hmm? so this piezo uh, effect was first discovered by uh, 
uh, Curie, uh, the Madame Curie's husband, Curie Curie, and he got the Nobel Prize uh, for radioactivity in 1903. But this entire piezoelectric force, uh, piezoelectric fact, was uh, discovered by uh, uh, Professor Curie. So uh, it basically tells that when you apply the voltage uh, across uh, uh, non-symmetric, non-central symmetric uh, crystal, um, so sometimes you can see you can say that it is there is imbalance of cations and anions, okay? And because of this imbalance of cations and anions, there is a voltage which is generated, uh, and uh, okay. So when you apply voltage sinusoidally, when you change the direction of the voltage. This expansion and contraction also varies uh, its its basically direction, and this uh, it's basically a tensor quantity. For example, it's an anisotropic quantity. So for a crystal, in certain direction, this um, piezoelectric effect will be maximum in comparison to other direction. So you have to select the direction. Most of the time, these are polycrystalline ceramics, like you know your tea mug. Basically, piezoelectric tube is uh, similarly similar to your uh, tea mug. It's, it looks white, color, creamy color uh, ceramic, so exactly like that. It's it's not a single crystal. And uh, where does it? Where do you can find it? You can find it in your uh, lab in uh, ultrasonicator. Ultrasonicator. There are uh, at least two piezo tubes. You can find it in uh, your gas lighters. Gas lighters. They all have that spark, which basically is generated is because of the piezoelectric uh, ceramics. Uh, that's why. So it has got uh, even this uh, um, quartz. Uh, no, this the thickness monitor uh, micro balance, like quartz micro balance uh, for thin film deposition. It also has uh, similar to that uh, piezoelectric uh, crystal. So when the material get deposited, deposited its resonance frequency shifts because of mass. And uh, that's how you can uh, generate the, uh, you can calibrate that to measure the thickness. It's a very simple concept. So as I mentioned that you can apply electric uh, voltage into different directions and depending upon the amount of uh, uh, voltage applied, uh, the polarization increases, uh, the voltage, uh, amount of voltage uh, which, uh, um is generated you can you can see that you can move it sideways also you can see that so this is typically done in uh, so afm so afm is basically you can see this this tube is doing this kind of raster scan you see this tube and this is where you apply the voltage uh, you, you do this uh, sideways movement so how do you do that the top uh, movement is done by this uh, uh, z electrode so you have this metal electrode and then and this XY movement is done uh, by these kind of electrodes. Okay, so this uh, black color is uh, the, the electrode. Okay, and then the ground. So it is split into two parts here. One is for XY movement, another is for Z movement. And uh, it's quite complicated design. Actually, it's, it's a lot of effort goes into. And I as a, I remember that. Once I had to change, I think two, three times I had to change it because of uh, obviously some students were learning and they ended up damaging it. So it was, I think, uh, around four or $5,000. So that was quite a large amount. It was like around 2.5 to 3 lakh rupees per scanner. So scanner is quite expensive. So sometimes uh, if the people, uh, so, so why the cost is so high? Uh, I told you that. Uh, the material cost, material has to be highly perfect. So it gives you uh, same uh, same movement over a period of time. So you would like to be as far perfect as possible. Aging should not be there. Otherwise you can use any uh, ceramic. Some, may, some people may sell you for lower price, but it's a question of uh, summing strong resolution. So you would not like to take any chance so it's highly calibrated, highly tested, multiple times, and a lot of uh, technology goes into that. So, so you should not mind paying for the quality. Uh, obviously, some uh, scholars like you are getting paid, and they are working hard in the laboratories. 
to make things perfect and perfect these are actually seeing uh, people like you who go into industry and they make these nice uh, reliable products uh, there are these uh, biomorph ceramics also for example there are two uh, is electric one and two and then that's how you can bend this movement so you apply a differential voltage on top one and bottom one so top one will ex- will stretch at uh, another uh, dimension and this one so there is a there is basically uh, you can create a parabola kind of a thing how does uh, the image form in afm and i taught the same thing in uh, electron microscopy also that how does the concept of pixel so here what exactly happens that when you say that uh, i am taking the image uh, so there are two things which uh, you have to set on set in the afm one is uh, i'll tell you the I'll, next time i think te- i'll teach you uh, i'll demonstrate probably monday using a software offline software i'll teach you i'll do some uh, data analysis also i'll bring another laptop and uh, windows laptop there i'll i'm going to teach you some basic things actually so uh, so it is binary and uh, when you uh, select the scan setting or operator to select the scan setting so you select whether uh, 512 by 512 or 125 by 125 pixels uh, right or to uh, 2048 uh, by 2048 okay and uh, these days you can go much higher um, than 2048 but uh, just uh, remember that suppose you are scanning 100 uh, nanometer by 100 a nanometer area and you scan uh, 1000 uh, uh, 24 or 512 by 512 uh, points per line now you can uh, see how many data points now you know the resolution i mean it's it may be empty resolution but at least it's not the it's it's not the actual resolution but at least you are you, you are collecting that much pixels what my point so uh, the distance between uh, these two points will become smaller uh, the larger you uh, take uh, these uh, scan size but but then it will uh, it will be a slower measurements you have to the faster basically uh, suppose you want to do, take a final image so you would like to uh, increase this number okay initially you can uh, do a faster scanning you can do probably uh, uh 64 or 128 or uh, whatever 256 or 512 whatever uh, okay so you can you can do that uh, but uh, finally you would like so what will happen if you uh, keep on increasing it so again uh, because tip has got its own size and uh, because of surface roughness and tip uh, tip size uh there is a always a constraint on uh the resolution x y resolution is always constraint uh z resolution uh, here z resolution has uh, different physics and x y resolution is di- finally because of the surface roughness as well as your tip uh, diameter so then it will limit actually so these 3 4 5 points neighboring points may look all same because this may, this may be uh, this this may not carry any variation in the information if the if if it is uh, beyond the resolution of uh, actual resolution of the microscope so it may not, it may be meaning meaningless so you keep on increasing but you will not get a final feature so that's what i am i'm trying to tell so this is basically a digital resolution okay this is just a digital resolution that you can play with electronics uh, so you have better electronics and better piezo so you can increase these points um to higher and higher values but the quality of afm probes actually decides the quality of the image not the points per line beyond certain point obviously okay so this has to be picked up so finally uh, you get uh, a, a point uh, for each uh, some data for each point so basically the position of the point becomes the position uh, the coordinate of that pixel and uh, the number for example 
you pick up some uh, data uh, so you say that here i picked up uh, 35 and here i picked up uh, 30 32 and here i picked up uh, 12 so that uh, value is basically the voltage the the topography it can be minus also okay it can be minus 12 so basically you are you're measuring some uh, value so x and y uh, becomes the coordinate on your sample where exactly you are measuring and the value z becomes the number assigned to that the weight actually the number assigned to that so uh, that's how so that uh, essentially it's a matrix okay and uh, so then you, uh, finally so you have several kinds of uh, sample loaded for electrical measurements you need obviously to apply voltage uh, to the tip so you have to use a special kind of a sample holder uh, contact measurement doesn't require any special kind of a, uh, sample holder but tapping mode does because in tapping mode you have to apply uh, some uh, uh, resonance signal you have to tap the tip you have to move it up and down so for example this kind of a uh, uh, biomorph uh, piezo is is touching uh, on the top of the cantilever okay it has to touch because tip has to resonate no? so some some signal has to provide uh, some something has to move it up and down so okay so these kind of things uh, sometimes helps to move the tip and tip up and up and down so it's not like just you apply uh, voltage on silicon nitride and it will start uh, jumping up and down basically you need a piece to even to move tip and tip up and down okay got it so then you need voltage arrangement there so for different uh, measurements different uh, so the tip go basically goes into inside this uh, clip and it is nicely held uh, controller uh, more price you pay more money you pay uh, sometimes controller itself can cost 70 uh, 60 70 lakh rupees did you hear me correctly uh 60 70 60 lakh rupees 40 lakh rupees so, so control that's that can be the price of the controller because you can understand that um all your three four lock in amplifier two lock two lock in amplifier two or three lock in amplifiers are housed it's basically a very sophisticated uh, you know electronics it's mind-boggling electronics actually uh if you open it up uh it's electronics wale dekh ke unko chakkar aa jate ki andar kitna zabardast electronics hai okay so uh, so you need to generate uh, different kinds of frequencies and you have to read also you have to read and you have to generate actually so it is it's quite complex so um, i'll move to afm probes because some students ask this question i think uh, i think i don't know who asked this question so so afm probe has got a, a three parts a wafer so as i told you that these uh, silicon uh, see so this these probes are manufactured in silicon fab labs uh, on large wafers you know the wafers uh, silicon wafer you might have seen so they are uh, circular uh, disc and they come into different different uh, diameters and one side is uh, you know there is a uh, linear cut and uh, you know the significance of uh, that linear cut it's not uh, entirely uh, curved from all side one side is basically uh, a flat uh, edge so uh, so you buy an entire uh, you know from one lot and uh, so there are two kinds of uh, materials uh, silicon nitrate or silicon oxide and another is doped or undoped silicon so usually silicon nitrate is used in contact mode the reason of using silicon nitrate in contact mode is it is its mechanical properties are uh, far better okay it is it is it doesn't wear out that easily so otherwise you use uh, uh, doped or undoped uh, silicon uh, probes sometimes you use, use doped silicon probes uh, suppose you want to do some electrical measurements so it's better to uh, use uh, doped silicon sometimes you use diamond probe also okay diamond probe uh, is used for uh, measuring the mechanical properties uh, 
see every material has got its own uh, young's modulus so uh, see idea is that uh, if you want to look at the uh, mechanical properties of some hard surface so your tip hardness should be uh, better than the material under probe so many times silicon um, the material which you are probing may uh, be harder than the silicon so what you are doing basically you are you are pressing uh, more the silicon rather than you are pressing uh, the sample from the silicon so for different reasons for example you do the indentation measurement for example you want to uh, characterize you you purchase your scooter right and uh, see a lot of technology goes here a lot of applications goes there so what what do you look for in the scooter that Oh, it should dent ni pana chahiye. There should not be any dent on the paint, right? And you are upset when, after some time, you find a dent on the scooter or your car. So you don't realize that uh, there are so many coatings uh, for that purpose that it doesn't get dent uh, that easily. So uh, how do you? Uh, uh, so this this. Uh, these uh, companies uh, for example you are buying uh, honda activa or you are buying um, tvs uh, jupiter tvs doesn't make the paint okay neither honda does so they will buy they will raise a quotation like you do uh, for your lab equipment and they will say okay we have we have to make this scooter and we want to paint it and they will tell their specifications that for now the question arises that how do you uh, make the for, for example you are in a scooter company and you want to buy the paint okay so how will you make the specifications that your customers are happy that after a certain time so there is lot of physics goes into that lot of engineering goes a lot of chemistry goes into that lot of okay it's not easy so how will you so there you have to have some parameters when you go to buy the paint okay and uh, several layers of paints are there so then uh, now companies have come to you and uh, some american company came some german company came and now some Ch chinese company came and uh, you know that chinese companies you can't trust but chinese companies also say oh i can i can um, sell this at a cheaper price and i am l1 are you listening to me all of you students you are uh, our scientists uh, future scientists so if you go to industry this problem may come now how will you reject the chinese vendor he will say oh my price is l1 i am much cheaper than uh, uh, your indian counterpart asian paints i am selling much less than asian paints and see my specification now your asian paint your indian company will suffer the chinese will take contract and if you reject chinese uh, company they will go to world trade organization hey are this indian people they have rejected and they will file a court case against you you can't reject it that easily so you have to be so indian government they are considering that our scientists should be um, clever enough our industry should be clever enough so it's basically uh, that's how the uh, if your science is strong your measurement is strong you can compete otherwise you are dumb you don't know really you don't so you have to test it all the paints you have to test it now how will you test it against what your testing conditions most of the time you can outsource to some laboratory and their laboratory they they charge Uh, exorbitant price suppose now that laboratory is uh, you know suppose chinese come and uh, they pay some money uh, if the tender is big billions of dollars then okay you take 1 million dollar in your pocket and you write in my favor so then it's the genuine people lost that lost the uh, tender okay so you have to be careful if you are technically strong you can really catch the now you understand how, how serious uh, the consequences are in industry how you kick them out pharma company how do you uh, find the problems suppose they are selling this uh, api i think rajendran may be knowing uh, api active pharmaceutical ingredient uh, we we buy major of uh, majority of uh, api from china you might be knowing then we make the drugs finished drugs here with the putting the uh, this excipients and uh, okay uh, and then we sell it to uh, foreign market and uh, local market so this uh, if you want to uh, how will you check the impurities uh, you know the drug impurities uh, are 
like you know chirality and other things and all the by products can be there in the drug which are which are quite similar to the uh, the actual drug so and it is in tons and tons of quantity how will you check the purity of uh, api so chemical industry is in a big problem okay and it is going to affect the health of the people so finally api vendor will not be responsible lawsuits will be on the our indian company that oh you are selling this drug and it is reacting uh, you will say that i did all everything all right i purchased the api from that company okay so this test measurements of is affects country's growth these days these are the test and measurements uh, whether it is electron microscopy or anything chemical uh, you know so if you so our people should be aware of uh, how to beat uh, them in their game how should be strong in the science okay so uh, so if you pay attention then at least that uh, seriousness will come through this lecture that okay you will not take anything for granted any measurement you will not take for granted that aptitude has to develop actually not uh, carelessness will not happen you will be very uh, tough with uh, yourself and with others uh, that no no nonsense you will not tolerate any nonsense uh, now when you uh, put any data okay so that uh, that temperament should develop in our generation that uh, not to tolerate uh, any nonsense data when this aptitude develop in the entire generation so country will grow otherwise country will fall okay so this so you can say that you can see that this is a v shape and as as i mentioned that uh, when uh, there is a lot of torsional force when you are doing uh, contact imaging when uh, you are in the contact repul strong repulsive forces and uh, then uh, a tip may break uh, so that is the reason that uh, contact mode probes are uh, v shape okay this question comes and then people don't read and this is a very simple thing People don't even read properly, and okay, what can I do? Suppose this question comes into your final exam, so you may miss out certain things. So this dimension also plays a major role. So there are five uh, tips, five cantilevers on a single wafer, uh, two at one side and two at uh, two on the other side. So each uh, one is having different uh, spring constant. You can see that one side you have two cantilevers. One is uh, longer. and another is shorter so which one will have a uh, larger spring constant can you unmute yourself somebody uh, nilu nilu can you unmute can yes, you tell sir. me which one will have a larger spring constant out of this uh, i think uh, first one means of first uh, big one big one will have larger, larger. good very good very thank you very much excellent excellent so it will have it will be larger spring constant yes uh okay uh oh i'm sorry i'm sorry ulta ho gaya ulta ho gaya sorry i'm sorry a small yes yes small yes. will be a uh, small will be larger spring constant ha huh? yeah yes 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 sorry sir sorry sir. <laughs> small will be larger spring constant okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. and thank if it is so okay nilu follow up question uh suppose this material is thick and this is thin yes and both are in same dimension so the thick one will have a larger spring constant or thick one thick one is low hoga na sir low nahi larger spring constant rigid hoga na more rigid thick one is more okay, rigid okay okay more rigid means more uh, higher the spring constant okay okay so softer means uh, smaller spring constant so f is equal to minus k so when k is small see for same force suppose you uh, suppose you want to measure larger deflection so for the same force so you would like to keep k small so k, x will become x will increase na yes 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 sir suppose you want to uh, sense one nano newton force and uh, if you keep uh, k uh, small x will become uh, larger and it will be easier for you to uh, see the deflection larger deflection means you can easily uh, measure it lesser okay. so uh, smaller st smaller uh, spring constant uh, works in your favor because it is more sensitive 
uh, but it is uh, smaller the spring constant you can uh, mute yourself uh, so smaller the spring constant uh, so the danger is basically you may uh, break the uh, tip you may smash the tip uh, so usually what happens is that uh, contact mode uh, probes have are softer because uh, the idea is that you are looking at uh, force forces in the uh, close ranges so uh, let me go back to my slides so uh, so if you look at sideways uh, this cantilever looks like uh, this so you can see that thickness matters here the thickness and obviously length matters in deciding the uh, i mean you can you can take from day to day experiences uh, you can you can for example uh, uh, you can take uh, this kind of uh, cantilever so if it is shorter then it will be it will not move that much and if it is longer it will it is moving like this more and more you can't even see so this is this is, this you can pick it up from day to day experience it's very easy and uh, uh, why the silicon nitride probes are short silicon nitride probes are uh, basically short because uh, and it should be uh, it should be thin and uh, as thin as possible because you want to provide smaller uh, spring constant uh, so as i mentioned that now you have some numbers so suppose there are four spring constant on a single wafer so if when you put this uh, wafer on to the tip holder so uh, one side actually tip usually break because that will get smashed by the tip holder so tip holder basically presses on one type one type and one type usually you end up damaging one side so now uh, uh, you should when you go to the afm room you should uh, most of the time we don't remember that which one we have we have used kaun sa wala tip humne use kiya hai so uh, even sometime i used to forget actually that oh, oh, then once you are done you don't remember actually then if you don't remember k uh, then how will you do the force calculation because force cal force calculation is f is equal to minus kx your uh, afm is telling you x how much the tip is deflecting but you have to multiply it by k then only you get the force f okay so uh, thing is that you have to note down this uh, uh, spring constant for example there are four different numbers so this is newton per meter so this is the softest uh, one 0.06 and this is the hardest one here so depending upon the surface uh, for softer samples you would like to for example polymer surfaces you would like to select uh, the softest this one so you can see that longer one is uh, uh this is a longer one and this is uh, softer a smaller k is means softer the smaller k means more it will uh, for the same force it will deflect um, more and uh, you can see that uh, shorter one will uh, will be this number it will increase slightly and this is thicker you can see that uh, it is shown by the uh, the color density uh change so this is a uh, 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 less darker and this is more darker this is thicker uh, so you can see that when you make take this uh, material thicker so you can see the increase in the number and it is longer so obviously um, so uh, next comes uh, parameter that tip radius and it is extremely important i will teach you uh, this decides the resolution this obviously this Uh, see this decides the z resolution uh, okay in z direction spring constant and uh, radius of curvature decides xy resolution so sharper smaller this radius of curvature uh, better uh, you get uh, less convolution you get so uh, but uh, it can be a problem for cell imaging for example you are looking at uh, microbial cells or mammalian cells so uh, usually put uh, people take a blunt uh, uh, tip because it may uh, uh, damage the uh, cell surface and it, you are not interested into uh, high resolution imaging for cells you are just looking you want to look at uh, low resolution imaging so for harder surface for example for polymer uh, or uh, uh, relatively harder than the biological surfaces or catalysis sample uh, you would like to use uh, harder surface because most of them are Uh, oxides uh, okay length uh, cantilever length is this length and uh, v shape is all this is always v shape for contact uh, 
reflective coating uh, on top there are, there is there are some there is sometimes uh, gold coating the reason of gold coating is basically you get better reflection uh, from the laser why is it important sometimes uh, uh, you do the imaging in the uh, for example you want to look at some uh, electro uh, electrochemical uh, uh, what uh, corrosion yes suppose you want to do the corrosive corrosion studies you want to look at uh, how certain surfaces corrode uh, when you put in some condition some chemical condition so you would like to do the uh, you suppose you want to do the in situ uh, imaging so you will be interested in doing some um, uh, fluid cell imaging uh, and then you will inject that corrosive environment and then you will leave it and then you over a period of time you will keep on uh, checking the surface uh, obviously you can do the same measurements in scm but scm will not give you uh, roughness please remember so most of the cor corrosive studies uh, are done in uh, afm because it's so easy you can get the three dimensional topography which is which is not possible uh, so easily anywhere else forget about electron microscopy electron microscopy doesn't give you and only profilometer can give you but uh, profilometer has uh, doesn't give you the image it just gives you certain uh, image it doesn't give you uh, image at that resolution it's not a microscopy it just gives you thickness uh, roughness profile in a single line so uh, a side wall matters a lot uh, for example uh, Uh, 35 degrees. So sharper. Somebody asked this question. I think Nilu or somebody asked this question when we arranged this AFM talk. Uh, that uh, uh, suppose you have a deep crevices. I don't know whether probably Rijwana asked this question or somebody asked this question that if you have deep crevices, uh, deep valleys. So then this matters a lot. This angle uh, matters a lot because uh, how you not this angle basically the uh, the tip angle. I'm considering this as the tip. So this is quite serious actually. Uh, So you would like to uh, be considerate about uh, this, and uh, suppose you are doing electrical measurement, then uh, in you can buy silicon uh, nitride trip and you can bring it. And we used to do that uh, quite a lot. So you take it to the um, this gold deposition machine. All the physics departments on all the micro electron microscopy uh, facilities they all have this uh, metal deposition depositor. So you can put. in the same machine you can put uh, your afm tip and you can deposit uh, conducting gold uh, over that and then you can do the uh, efm measurement scaling probe microscopy measurements with the same probe of course it is not recommended because gold is soft and uh, it will wear out very fast so normally it is uh, there are uh, specialized probe but sometimes you can't students uh, are in a hurry and uh, you it takes months to order specialized probe sometime there is no money so i'm just telling you trick suppose you don't have money and uh, you need to do some electrical measurement so you can uh, do the um, this gold deposition and this is the trick i'm telling you uh, and uh, you can do the electrical measurement okay efm or kelvin probe microscopy suppose you want to do some electrochemical measurement you can do it easily um but you have to be careful that uh, gold is uh, can wear out actually coating on the back of the cantilever i told you already that uh, it is mostly for uh, getting better signal and uh, okay so uh, which this also i have told you that uh, when the torsion friction forces are of interest you want to measure them uh, beam cantilevers uh, are more sensitive because they will bend more but uh, again they can uh, get damaged if it is too much uh, bending so v shape cantilevers are best but they are less sensitive because they the more rigidity uh, against the torsional measurement makes them less sensitive so you can experiment uh, depending upon uh, the friction analysis which you want to do so this is but this beam kind of uh, cantilevers are usually used for as i mentioned for tapping mode because in tapping mode you are not touching the surface all the time you are intermittently uh, in contact with the uh, surface you are tapping it at very high frequency so tapping mode uh, yes this is uh, 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 this is to be uh, remembered so tapping mode afms are generally uh, two order of magnitude 
uh, higher in the spring constant. For example, you saw that uh, uh, these values, spring constant values are less than uh, fraction of uh, one Newton per meter. So this, these tapping mode can be very high actually. This can be like few nanometer. You can see tens of, actually much higher, two order of magnitude or sometimes three, three actually, three order of magnitude. So what is the reason uh, that uh, spring constant uh, uh, of uh, tapping mode is much higher? Because you want to break free, because you are tapping it, you want to break free of the addition forces. So you are, I will teach you that it, it's very, com it's in common sense. I mean, see, because you are, uh, you are going out of this uh, adhesive uh, force and uh, and then you are uh, coming into the uh, attractive zone and then you're going to the repulsive. So you are scanning entire big uh, force curve. So in that force curve, you encounter very strong adhesive forces. So if your spring constant is not uh, that uh, large, so uh, you you can't move the tips. Uh, please believe me. Uh, most of the time, students they uh, in rainy season, especially for hygroscopic uh, samples from pharma industry, we do a lot of uh, work for pharma industry. So this is highly highly important for pharma industries. Highly important. It's highly applied actually. We uh, NCL earn a lot of money because of uh, AFM on pharma industries, uh, uh, pharma industry samples. So. There, in rainy sample, uh, rainy season, we we say no to uh, hygroscopic uh, samples. Uh, contact measurements uh, finish. You can't uh, tip one move because tip will get glued. So, in, uh, for hygroscopic samples, you would like to take higher spring constant. So, because it can break free of uh, in each tapping cycle, you have, when you are tapping it, it can break free of very strong adhesive forces. So, this is the application of uh, choosing. Uh, higher spring constant depending upon your sample. A resonance frequency is uh, quite high, hundreds of kilohertz, you can see that it's quite high. And uh, so this, uh, that means in one second you are tapping uh, so many uh, uh, tens of thousands of times you are tapping the surface. And this is the uh, tip radius of curvature, five to 10 nanometer. Uh, uh, tip length is almost the same, uh, beam type configuration uncoated or optional, they are mostly uncoated. You don't need actually coating. You don't, do not need coating, but uh, you can prefer uh, 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 some coating as well. Uh, okay, so now, uh, now, uh, now let us look at uh, why silicon nitride uh, uh, tips are chosen as a tip material for cantilever for contact mode. Uh, see, if you look at this uh, uh, wear resistance, so you can see that uh, silicon nitride probe, this is the red curve and silicon is uh, here. So silicon nitride uh, tips do not wear out that easily. Uh, this is the loading force uh, in micronewton. This is around 100 micronewton force. You can see that uh, this wear depth nanometer. So, so uh, here for, uh, is, uh, for silicon, you can see that uh, these tips are wearing out even for a milder force, much lower force. There is a lot of uh, wear depth actually. You, you can see that it goes to 150 uh, nanometer. N next comes uh, silicon rich uh, silicon nitride, and this is nitrogen rich uh, silicon nitride. You can see it's SI3 and 4. So, this nitrogen rich, this is silicon rich. So, there are two compositions in silicon nitride. And then you can have diamond-like carbon. DLC is basically, you know that diamond-like carbon. So if you have, if you need better uh, tips, then you can use those kind of, uh, um, I'll move. Uh, so this is silicon nitride is actually one of, one of the most popular material. Uh, okay. Uh, I think somebody asked this question that why, so this is, uh, this, Silicon industry is there, that's why silicon is there. Okay, that's the simplest answer, actually. This is another straightforward answer. Otherwise, there are many other material, uh, interesting material. Um, yes, this is uh, some student might have asked questions in my uh, class. So you can see that this is a zoom view of a tip. You can see that there are asperities on the tip. Tip uh, is not uh, ideal surface, the smooth surface, conical or something, or spherical. So you can see that 
if you zoom uh, tip, uh, you can see that there are it, uh, it's asperity. It's jig 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 jig. So, and when you touch uh, the sample surface with the with the tip, uh, or either in the tapping mode or contact mode. Uh, you can see that sometimes uh, suppose this uh, guy this peak breaks so this is this this is no longer there so you 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 are contacting with somewhere somewhere here or you are contacting this becomes your contact this is earlier for example this was your contact this breaks then this will become your contact so your contact keep on redefining okay so that is also a problem so you uh, you want to make sure that this does not happen uh, when you collect the data. So tip modification is a reality and uh, uh, it should not, it should be avoiding actually. The, this is the blue circle, the tip wearing out. Uh, so you can see that uh, he, he, here this, uh, uh, here, uh, you can see that this is quite rough and this is smoothened out. So that means uh, these asperities are less here after certain use. Okay, so this has to be avoided. Uh, does the silicon nitrate tip gives a good results for all samples? For works for most of the samples actually. Uh, yes, I think all of you, uh, we have already uh, covered that. So soft samples, I, as I told you, that K should be as small as possible. So K here is even smaller, 0 0.006 uh, Newton per meter. It's very, very small, actually, uh, as soft as possible. Uh, so I'll skip it. Uh, I'll show some movies, uh, uh, probably. There are many questions you can go through. Uh, almost all your questions are answered in a question, question answer format. So you can see. Um, uh, geometry of the, uh, let me see, let me show you some movies, okay, and uh, it will be fun also. Uh, somebody should unmute and uh, let me know if you can see the movie. Uh, let me start it because I'm doing it for the first time uh, with this on the Zoom. So can you see the movie? Can you unmute one of you quickly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is uh, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, uh, this is basically a simulation. I call it movie, but it is a simulation. It's not an actual movie. Uh, so here I demonstrate uh, contact mode uh, AFM. I guess uh, this is, uh, okay, let us see. Uh, so this is typical uh, sample surface. You can see that there are these slopes and there are crevices, there are, it's all uneven surfaces. So let us see how it moves. So there are two ways of doing that, constant height measurements, and uh, we'll learn it actually uh, in the next lecture. Uh, constant height and constant force. Okay, so when you move the cantilever uh, on top of the surface, so there are two options. Either you decide that uh, I don't want this uh, cantilever to deflect. I mean, when there is a deflection in the cantilever, that means uh, there is a force. For example, if you don't change this distance and if you move this uh, cantilever backwards, so what will happen when it uh, looks at uh, uh, this uh, bump? then uh, the forces, Wonder Wall forces are going to be stronger uh, here than here. So because the one, uh, not Wonder Wall forces, uh, repulsive forces, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, repulsive part of the Wonder Wall force, okay? So repulsive parts, part of the Wonder Wall force will be uh, much larger. So this will uh, bend the cantilever, uh, uh, okay, like this upwards. Uh, 
so that means cantilever is uh, deflecting so so uh, so this is the amount of cantilever deflection is uh, plotted here so this is basically how much uh, cantilever has deflected so cantilever deflection uh, is proportional to the uh, applied force change in the force action okay and uh, so uh, this is uh, vertical tip position so you you can decide that i Uh, yeah so so for example uh, so let us look at this so you can see that uh, i have decided that i don't want to move the uh, cantilever cantilever deflection should be zero so it's basically constant force mode force to keep the constant force uh, you are moving up and down this is this has to be moved up and down so uh, with this mode easily Uh, so for example when you come up you already realize the tip realize that force is force is increasing force is increasing it's like a balloonist uh, riding over pune actually when balloon rides over uh, pune and uh, balloon is basically climbing up so you have to increase the hot air in the balloon so you can keep climbing up so how much you are climbing up it is recorded here so basically you can see that you are tracing the topography because you want to keep the force constant so in order to keep the force constant you have to move the tip up what it so amount of you know how much uh, uh, tip uh, you are moving up or you are moving the sample down whatever it, it may be the case and this is being done by the scanner the fact that you you saw you saw the scanner so with the help of the scanner uh, either scanner is here or here doesn't matter actually either tip is moving or sample is moving uh, it doesn't matter at all finally basically you are playing with the distance between sample and tip you are increasing the sample and uh, distance between sample and tip so more you increase basically that means you are directly imaging the topography you, okay so you can see that uh, so this is this basically uh, for this feedback loop has to be on what we call it feedback loop basically uh, pid controller uh, how does it know that it has to move up so this information has to be passed to the controller uh, and controller uh, calculates how much it has to move it's not that easy you know this entire software is uh, has to be or hardware and software both have to be both have to be very intelligent so that it can make the decision how much uh, it should move so that the force can remain constant and now you can ask me the question that uh, uh, what do you mean by constant i mean Uh, in physics there is uh, uh, i mean if you look at any physical measurement uh, measurement uh, nothing is actually uh, uh, constant everything is uh, you know change in the only change is the only constant we say that so when i say that uh, uh, there is it is not deflecting so what do we i what do i mean that uh, up to the measurable uh, limits of my machine the cantilever doesn't deflect obviously it is deflecting but i am not measuring it or i am not sensitive enough to measure it so i i am fine as long as i don't uh, see it obviously it is deflecting all the time because of thermal motion is also thermal movements also happening uh, all the quantum chemists computational chemists they know that everything uh, keeps uh, uh, vibrating so when this uh, uh, vibrate this is vibrating because of the room temperature so that means uh, cantilever deflection no matter you try hard it is moving all the time so we are not considering the uh, that uh, quantum world here uh, but classically you can say that yes we are able to manage it so you can see that it has traced the topography okay you can see that it has traced so it is called so it is a it is a slow uh, it is considered a slow tracing method it's called con uh, constant force you can see it again i play it one more time So this is called contact uh, constant force contact imaging you can see that tip is in the contact with the surface and uh, it is in the wanderwolf's uh, uh, repulsive mode okay and uh, now const constant uh, height mode now you see the ulta opposite now i would like to keep the uh, i don't want to keep the i don't care uh, uh, so i turn off the feedback loop okay now i don't care how much whether this tip uh, deflects uh, so i don't want to change the balloon's height okay this is possible 
but balloon may glow go close to uh, sometime balloon may be very close to surface if suppose surface high for example balloon is flying over ncl building so uh, suppose balloon is flying uh, over like around like let's say 75 meter from uh, surface uh, average surface uh, of pune now when it flies over ncl building it will be very close to the NC, uh, ncl building uh, from the top floor but when it's uh, when it goes to the uh, garden area Uh, the distance will increase but balloonist uh, chose not to change the uh, not to do anything not to change the uh, gas uh, pressure uh, but you can afford this when you know that uh, for example graphene surface super smooth surface you can do that and it is very fast mode because you are not you are not telling electronics all the time to constantly move up and down so this is super fast mode high resolution mode very high resolution fast no problem but this is reserved this is reserved for the samples which are uh, quite smooth i mean when i say quite smooth you already know i have already told you atomically smooth or okay so you can see that uh, uh tip position is uh, okay is 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 changing and cantilever is diffracting quite a lot but you are not moving this up and down you are not moving this up and down cantilever is diffracting definitely uh again you look at this cantilever is diffracting so you can see that when it is going up and down but this is not moving up and down this this guy this 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 with respect to this plate this distance is fixed earlier we were uh, moving uh, the distance between this and this in order to keep the uh uh cantilever uh, deflection as close to uh, minimum uh, as as possible so for rough sample you would like to choose the uh, the constant force mode and for smooth surfaces you would like to choose the constant height mode obvious reason it's it's all common sense so there is nothing to remember and suppose you are measuring very rough surface you now you can see that on top of the earlier surface i have these uh strong uh, bumps you can see that there are uh these uh, uh objects sitting there which has got a, a sudden uh change in the topography so there is a sudden change in the topography then that means uh, uh for example uh, a fighter uh, pilots uh, or they crash sometimes you know some mig or something or even a passenger plane uh, sometimes they are not able to see uh Uh, some large towers and uh, immediately they cannot raise the height of the airplane and uh, it leads to uh, crashing now you will see the same thing happening here it will not crash but tip will deflect strongly so here you are trying to keep the deflection uh, as um, uh, constant as possible see you are trying to keep the constant but then you can see this uh, blips you can see the blips you see uh, if you compare uh, there is a uh, there is a sudden rise in the height and correspondingly you can see that cantilever deflects in one direction and finally there is a uh, sudden fall into the height and you can see the corresponding blip into the data uh, deflection otherwise here deflection is able to maintain the machine feedback loop is able to maintain the deflection constant even though surface is not uh, uh, smooth surface is varying its uh, height but here you can see that uh, it is able to um, so you can see that uh, how this surface is uh, measured actually so this will be your uh, data this will be your image this will give you both will give you image so this will give you one image and this will so in afm you get three uh, different kinds of images in one shot three boxes three uh, panels i'll show you uh, Mm, on uh, monday uh, a demo uh, using software i hope my other windows uh, laptop works it has uh, it is running on low on uh, ram i have to increase the ram so windows uh, pcs that's why i hate windows i don't use windows at all i have two uh, mac air one my personal one office so i rarely 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 once in a only for teaching i use windows 
So now you can see. So when you sum it up, then you have actual uh, topography. You can see that when you sum this and this, because uh, this sudden uh, jerk was not able to uh, uh, was not calculated in the scanner movement. So this is scanner movement and this is stick movement. So both you are trying to scanner is also trying its best to measure the topography, but sudden jerk. Uh, scanner scanner means basically the balloon is trying to uh, move up uh, or aircraft is trying hard to move up that is the scanner movement so aircraft tried to move but it was not able to move so it basically you can see this kind of picture so so you have to add this and this then only you get the actual topography so you can see these features here actual this doesn't represent uh, true feature this and this together gives you true feature so this is usually done in uh, by software machine does it and you have to be careful what you are measuring and this is for uh, rajendra lateral folds so for example you are you have a, a bland polymer bland or some other thing for example i told you that uh, you uh, you buy some product in the market na some polymer product and uh, when you uh, rub your uh, uh, hand you say are yaar kitna acha hai kitna matlab dekho skin pe kapda kitna smooth hai itna acha soft dikh raha hai na ye kapda itna rough hai so what do you mean by rough and uh, smooth and uh, for example i buy this bottle uh, you may not be able to see the and i say that oh this is uh, smooth and uh, this looks very rough so how do i mean this is not a uh, quantitative measurement so suppose you want to sell a product into the market how will you tell the customer that how much smooth is smooth and how rough is rough so you have to do some measurements obviously so this is the measurement you do actually so you see that when it goes over uh, this surface you can see that so there are two things as i told you that the cantilever can uh, twist because of this slope and cantilever can twist because of this change in the roughness so if you see if you see this carefully if you start from here so there is a cantilever twist uh, when it encounters this uh, light blue patch and over this patch uh, probably this is of different polymer this is a different polymer so there is no uh, change in the uh, cantilever twisting when you are above this surface but suddenly when this patch uh, uh, now this material uh, is is changed so now you can see that uh, this is flat but again when this material starts then you will start seeing uh, this kind of a bump Hmm? because but this twist is because of the slope change material is not changing here so how do you uh, tell uh, but if you represent this data this is false data so you basically come backwards so uh, if there is any um, change in the slope again then you will see the same thing again okay so then you uh, deduct uh, this side and this side then you have truly frictional information so this is frictional as well as slope information so this is slope information this is frictional information so uh, so now you can see that uh, uh, when you when you deduct this you have true uh, truly frictional information and uh, you can see that here it is completely flat because material is the same it's a green material so this is uh, the trick uh, I, oh uh, oh time is uh, what is the time now Oh, i am looking at different watches i am sorry i am extremely sorry i just forgot uh, my watch is not uh, this wrist watch is uh, uh, okay i am extremely sorry today i just lost uh, uh, okay are you there some of you or you are sleeping No, sir. It's okay, sir. I'm sorry. But my this wristwatch, uh, uh, my Fitbit uh, uh, charger is not working, so I had to change this uh, as old-fashioned watch, and uh, it's not working. So I forgot to check the computer watch. I was looking at this watch, and I was enjoying teaching so much that uh, I forgot the uh, sense of time. So let me stop the.